Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to build a CLI or a command line interface that gives cryptocurrency prices. And we're going to use Node.js along with the help of some packages and also an API from nomics.com, which is a really cool API that gives us a bunch of data on different cryptocurrency coins, Ethereum, Bitcoin and so on. So I just want to give you a really quick demo. So I called it Coindex. And I have it set up so I can run Coindex from anywhere on my system and it gives us some options, version help and then our top level commands, which are key and check. So the key commands are to manage our API key because we do have to get an API key and set that through our command line interface and then check to check the coin info or check prices. Now, if I go ahead and run Coindex, let's say check price. It's going to tell me that I don't have an API key set and to run Coindex key set. So let's go ahead and run that coin gets Coindex key set. Actually, I just want to show you if I run key dash H. So any top level command, if you run help, it'll show you the sub command. So we have set show and remove and some descriptions here. So let's run. Key set. And it's going to prompt us for an API key, which I already have. So I'm just going to grab that and put that in there and just enter. So now our key is set. So now if we go ahead and run check price, it's going to give us by default three coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple, along with the name, the price and the rank. Now, we're also going to add some options. So if we want to get a certain coin or certain group of coins, we can add an option of coin and let's say we just want Bitcoin and you can put comma separated values in here as well. So if we just want Bitcoin, you'll see it'll return just that. And if we want to change the currency from USD to something else, we can actually add the CUR option and let's set that to euros. And now you can see that it's even formatted as euros with the with the um, symbol and it also gives us the rank of the coin. Of course, Bitcoin is number one. All right, so that's what we'll be building. Let's clear that up and let's jump into the browser real quick because I want to show you this nomics.com. This is where you can get the API key if you click this little button here and then click here. You do have to enter an email and then they send you the, the key, but it is completely free. And I chose this one because it gives you a ton of data and there's no rate limits. Um, but of course, you could use a different API if you want. You might just have to refactor the, the request a little bit. All right. So as far as modules, Commander JS is the main module we're using. It allows us to, to have a really nice syntax to handle options, to get commands and, and run certain actions for those commands. Inquirer is, we'll be using to prompt the user for the, the API key and use that input. Config store is a really cool module that will allow us to store config values and get them and delete them and so on. And that's what we're going to use for our key. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into VS Code. And I just have a completely empty folder here called Coindex CLI. And just like with any Node application, we want to run npm init. Of course, you have to have Node.js installed. If you don't, just go to nodejs.org. And for package name, let's just call this Coindex and version. That's good. Description. We don't need one. We don't need that. We don't need that. Author. You can put your own name if you'd like. And MIT license. Okay, so we have our package.json. Now, in order to create a CLI, we need to make we need an executable file. And in order to do that, in our package.json, we're going to have a bin property. And we want to set that to the executable file. And I just want to show you real quick in the documentation if we just search for package.json and look at that, those docs, Let's search for bin. So right here, uh, a lot of packages have one or more executable files that they'd like to install into the path, which is what we want to do because we want to be able to run this from anywhere. So we need to put the path in here. Um, yeah, so let's do that. The path that we're going to use is going to be dot slash. So in the root, we're going to have a folder called bin and then a file called coindex.js. That's our, our main executable uh, entry point. So let's save that and let's create that. So a folder called bin. And inside bin coindex.js. And in here for now, just put a console log and say hello from coindex. 
Now, just doing that isn't going to make it so that this command works. I mean, obviously we could run like node and then go into the bin folder and then run the file. But we want this to be, you know, a global command that that is in our path. So there's a couple things that we need to do. And one of them is right here. So it says, please make sure that, you, you know, files in your bin uh, have this at the top. So it's this hash bang user bin and an env node so that it uses the node executable. So let's grab that. And it's really important that you have this at the very top. Don't put anything above it. Now, just having that still, if I run Coindex isn't going to work because we need to run NPM link. We're going to create a symbolic link. Now, um, I might create a video showing you how to add this to the NPM repository where you can just NPM install global Coindex and then you'd have it, you know, you could run it on your system. But for now, we're going to use NPM link, although we're on a Mac, so we're going to use sudo. Okay, and then it created this link right here to, you know, our, our global node modules folder and then Coindex bin Coindex JS. So now if we run the command. Now we see hello from Coindex and just to show you if we run this from anywhere right now, I'm in my this is in my um, home directory. If I run it here, it works. Okay, so it's going to work from anywhere. So that takes care of that. That's kind of the you know how to how to just get this set up. Now we want to install some dependencies, uh, including Commander, which is our main module that we'll be using. So let's say npm install Commander. We're also going to use Inquirer. We're going to be using what else? Um, uh, what is it? Config store. Axios to deal with our third party API and then also colors to add some colors to the CLI. So those should all get added to our package .json. Good. So we're going to start off in this main file here. Uh, we want to make sure that this hash bang is at the top and then we're going to bring in commander as program. And you can check out the documentation as well if you want to learn more. But we're going to set this to commander and then what we want to do. Actually, you know what? Before we even work with commander, I just want to show you something. If we run like, let's say Coindex and then key. So I just want to show you how we can grab these these parameters that we pass along with the command without even using commander or anything like that. So we get those with this process dot argv and this is actually an array. So I'll go ahead and console log this so you can see what this gives us. So it gives us an array and the first two are these paths. So this user local bin node user local bin coindex and then the third value here, which is obviously the you know, index two in the array 012 is the first parameter or first argument. Now, if I pass in key set, set is going to be the fourth zero. I'm sorry, the third zero, one, two, three. Now, if I want to access just one of those, I could do two. So if I go ahead and run that, then it gives me key. All right. So I just wanted to show you that this is how we can get the arguments. Now, I'm going to get rid of that. And to use this commander, we're going to take program. And we can go ahead and we can add on commands and stuff, but I want to add a version. So if we do version and we can hard code in a version for now. And then the last thing we want here is parse. And this is where we actually pass in what I just showed you process dot argv so that it has access to any arguments that you pass in. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm just going to type in here coindex dash h. And automatically we get these the, these options. So we get version. Okay, we have our version here and help is going to be there automatically when using commander. So I can do dash either uppercase V or dash dash version and it gives me the version. Now, a lot of times uh, in the, I think this is even in the documentation, you'll take the version from your package .json. So we can actually bring in our package .json file here. 
So say so dot go up one level and then package dot JSON and we can use any of the property values from that file such as version. So PKG dot version, which is going to give us whatever is in this right here. So we can access name, version, all this stuff. So if we save this and we run dash V again, we should still see 1.0.0, whatever you have in your package dot JSON. All right, so now we want to start to work on our first command, our top level command, which is key, because we want to have key along with sub level commands like set, uh, show, remove, stuff like that. So I'm going to put this on a new line. I believe if we have more than two, prettier won't mess with it. But let's go ahead and say dot command. And we want this top level command to be key. And then I'm just going to put a description here. We'll say manage API Oops. API key. And I'm just going to put the website. So HTTPS uh, nomics dot com. All right. So now just by doing that, if I go ahead and I run help, it should show us that top level command right here key and it also shows the description now since I mean we could put an action here for if we wanted just key to do something but we want to have sub level commands so in the bin folder we're going to create a, another file called coindex dash and then whatever that the name of the command in this case key dot js okay and now in here we also want to bring in commander as program and then let's go ahead and say program dot command and we're going to have a set command okay I'm actually going to put this on a separate line so we'll have dot command set we can add a description so let's say set API key and again I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say get at https nomics.com now this command we want to do something so we want to add an action to it and this action takes in a function which right now I'm simply going to just do a console log and let's just say hello from set get rid of that okay and then we have to add the parse to this so program dot parse and then add in our process dot argv here like that all right so let's see if we go ahead and run coindex and then key and then help we should see yeah right here under commands we now see set okay so that's that right there now if we run that say coindex key set We get hello from set. We're still seeing this hello. I actually meant to get rid of that. We don't need this in here. Okay, so we're seeing hello from set now. But before we start to work on the set command, I just want to get all of our basic commands in here for key. So I'm going to just copy that down and let's change this one here at the top. Not at the top, but right here to show. And for the description, this is going to show our API key. We don't need that. And then for the action, just for now, this is just a placeholder. Let's say show and then this one is going to be remove and this will remove our API key. We don't need that. And then again, just a placeholder. We'll say remove. All right, so we should be able to run any of these. So if we say remove, we get hello from remove. And if we do key help, it should show all of those commands, which right now don't do anything. Okay, so we could put all of our functionality in this file within this function, but that would be really messy. So what we would commonly do here is create a folder for commands. And inside here, we'll create a key.js. Okay, so notice the convention. We have a key command, we have our, our coindex dash key.js, and then we have our key.js in our commands file. Now, in the commands file, let's go ahead and 
let's create an object here uh, called key. And how I'm going to set the way I'm going to set this up is just have a bunch of methods inside this object. So for instance, we'll have set. And I guess for now, let's just console log here. Hello from set. All right. And then we'll just go ahead and grab this. We're going to have what three commands. We have set. We have show. Show and this is. This is going to be remove. Hello from remove. Okay, and then we need to uh, let's get rid of this last comma and we need to export this because we're going to bring this into the Coindex key file. So mod module exports equals key. Okay, so we'll save that and then back in this file, let's bring it in. So we'll say const key equals and require. And where where are we want to go up one level into commands and then key and then instead of these console logs, I'm just going to write in the action. We're going to say key dot set. Okay, for this one. key dot show. So we're just structuring our application right now. I mean, obviously that this isn't doing anything, but we're just setting it up in a neat way. So key dot remove. So we should still get the hello messages. So if I do key remove key set hello from set and we should get show as well. Okay, so this file is nice and neat. Now we have this which is nice and neat. Now to give this some functionality, obviously what we want to happen here is we want to set an API key and we're going to be using um, a config store for that. We want to be able to show it which might not be a great idea in a production application um, but just for this it's fine just you know if you want to see what's in it um, and then remove will remove the key now I don't want to again put all the functionality in here so I'm going to create a library a separate library in a folder called lib called key manager so uppercase K since this is going to be a class manager dot JS And the sole purpose of this library or this class is to set, get and delete keys. Okay, it has nothing to do with the command. These are these are the actual command responses, but we'll use this library within these functions. So inside of um, our library here, let's go ahead and create a class called key manager. And we're going to be using um, config store here. So let's say const config uppercase C store equals require config store. And I just want to show you the, the docs real quick for this and how this works. So we bring it in like we just did. And then you have to create an instance. You have to instantiate it with new config store and then pass in a name. In this case, they use the package.json name, which I think we'll do as well. And then you can just simply say config.get to get the key, you know, whatever it is. Um, it doesn't have to be an API key, it could be a name or, or whatever. Any config value you can set, you can delete. Okay, so it basically gives you these operations for your keys. Um, so what we're going to do is in our key manager here, we're going to have a constructor. which runs whenever we initialize our key manager and set a property called conf to our new config store. And this takes in a name. So we'll go ahead and bring in our package dot Jason. So this is package. Actually, we need to go up one level. Package dot Jason, and then we should be able to pass that into our config store as the name. Now, within our class, instead of saying config dot um, get or whatever, we say this dot conf dot get. We can run that from any method. So the first method that I want to create is set key. And that's going to take in a key so we can pass in an API key. 
and we want to set it to config store. So we say this dot conf uh, set and we want to set this as we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to call it API key and we're passing in the key that's passed in and then we're just going to return the key. Okay, so very simple. The methods in this class are going to be pretty simple. So that will set the key. Now we want one to get the key. So get the current key. So let's say const key equals this dot conf dot get. And then we want the API key. And I'm just hard coding API key. If you had multiple things you were setting and getting, you might want to pass in, you know, a prop and then have prop here. Um, but we're not we, we're just using this one value. So, I mean, we can hard code it like this. It's fine. And then let's check for the key. So let's say if not key, I mean, we could handle this a bunch of different ways. I'm going to go ahead and throw an error. So, uh, I'm sorry, throw new error. And in here, let's say no API key found and then we'll just say get a key at HTTPS nomics dot com. All right, so we'll throw the error and then underneath that we're just going to return key so that will get the key and then the delete key is going to be pretty similar. So I'm just going to copy that and let's change this to a delete key because we do want to see if we have one. If we don't, we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, but then after that, let's delete it. So this dot conf dot delete API key and then we'll just go ahead and return. All right, so that should delete the key. Now we want to export our library here. So module exports key manager. And yeah, I think that should be good. So now we can go over to our key.js command file and we can use that library. So up top here, let's bring in. Actually, we want this to be. Yeah, key manager. equals require and we want to go up into lib slash key manager. Now I'm also going to bring in inquirer because we're going to be using that here. Okay. Uh, also colors might as well bring that in. make sure you installed it if you didn't already. All right, so we get colors. All right, good. So in our set here, we need to use our key manager set our set key method. So we're going to get rid of that and we need to instantiate our key manager. So we're going to say key manager with a lowercase k equals new key manager. with an uppercase K. So that will give us a new key manager object. Um, now the key we're actually getting from the user input. So this is where inquirer comes in. We're going to create an input variable and set this to inquirer uh, dot prompt, which will prompt the user. Now this will return a promise and I don't like the you know, dot then syntax. So we're going to use a sync await. So let's go ahead and set this to a sync and then a wait on the inquirer prompt because that returns a promise. Now this takes in an array and you can have as many questions as you want. We're just going to have one, which is the API key. So we give this a type of input. You can have like password where it's hidden, uh, but we just have a, a standard input. We'll give it a name of key. And then a message for the user. which is going to be enter say enter API key um, and I'm going to make this so that this is green. So using colors, we can just add dot and then a color like dot green and then I'll just go ahead and concatenate 
and I want to put the URL here. So we'll put a uh, yeah, HTTP s nomics dot com. So that'll be the message. Now that input will include is going to be an object that includes the answers. So this has a name of key, so we should be able to get it from input dot key. That should give us that uh, whatever they type in. So we want to set that as our key. So let's say const key equals and we want our key manager um, object and then we should be able to call set key. And then we can pass in here input dot key because that's going to be the user's input. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and say if key, then let's just do a console log here and we'll say um, API key set and we'll make this blue. We'll just add on dot blue and that should do it. So let's save that and let's go down here and let's run coindex key set. And we get enter API key and it gives us the URL. So I'll just say hello and we get API key set. Now, one thing that I don't want is for us to run this and us not have to enter anything. Like if I just click enter, that works and that shouldn't happen. So we can actually set custom validations by saying validate. Now I'm going to create a custom method method called is required. So I'm going to do that in a separate file, though. So I'll have a folder called utils and inside utils. Let's create a file called validation .js. And this is actually uh, going to be pretty simple. We're just going to put a comment here. Just say required fields. So we'll say is required and let's use an arrow function. So it takes in an input and then we'll say if that input is equal to nothing, then just using a ternary here, we'll go ahead and return this value is required else than true. All right, and that should do it. Now we do have to export this. So whoops, what the heck modules dot exports. And we'll ex we mo I mean, I'm going to just export this in curly braces so that if we create other methods in here at some point, we can do that as well. Okay, so we'll save that and then let's go back to our key JS and let's bring in uh, let's say const is required. We're going to bring that from dot dot slash utils slash validation. So now let's try that out. So if we go down here and we say key set looks like we got something wrong here. Modules is not defined. What did I do? Modules dot export. Yep. All right, get rid of that. Okay, let's try that again. So if I just click enter, it says funk apply is not a function. Um, validate is required. Oh, to wrap this. All right, so the function out. Uh -huh. All right, you know what? start over. All right. So key set enter. This value is required. So I have to enter something good. So our set is done. Now let's work on the show, which right now just says hello from show. So I'm going to go ahead and use a try catch here. Because remember, I threw an error in the library here because uh, we're going to be using get key. So if there's no key found, it's just going to throw that. We want to be able to catch it. So let's do a try catch and let's say const key manager equals new key manager. And we want to get the key. So const key equals key manager dot get key. So that will get it. And then I just want to log it basically. So we'll just say current API key 
space and then we'll just put a comma here and we'll put the key and we'll make it yellow. Okay, and then just return key. So that should show it. So if we go down here and we say key get not get show. There we go. It shows us our current API key. So last one here is to remove. So for this uh, we can actually. Oh, the, I forgot the catch. So the catch, we're going to go ahead and just console error and take that error, which should have a message attached to it, and then we'll make that red. All right, so I'm going to copy that whole try catch and put that in our remove. So we want to first try to get the key. No, we don't need to get the key, but we need to instantiate key manager because we need to delete it. So we're going to say key manager dot delete key. And we don't need to console log this, but I do want to Let's see, let's get rid of that and let's just say that the key's been removed. So we'll say key removed and let's make that blue. Yeah, I think that should be good and then we'll just return. All right, so let's try that. Now, notice how I just say delete. I don't have to pass anything in here because in our library We're just hard coding this API key because it's the only one we have. But again, if you had more than one property, you might want to do something like that and pass in prop. But we don't have to do that here. So now let's run key remove key removed and then we'll do key get and it should give us an error. Not I keep saying get it show. Okay, so no API key. Now let's do set. And I'm going to actually I'm going to put my actual um, API key in there. Okay, so now if I do show shows me my key. Good. So that part of the app is done. Now we want to move to actually working with the API and getting cryptocurrency data. So we're going to have let's see, we can close the key manager. This I think this is all set. We can close that. So in our in our main file here, coindex.js, we're going to add another command, another top level command, and that's going to be check. And for the description, we'll say check uh, check coin coin price info. And then same thing, we go to our bin folder here, create a new file called coindex-check.js because that's the name of the command. So let's see in here before we start to deal with the API, let's just set this up. So we want to bring in commander. And let's see, we're going to say program. program dot command and the only sub sub command to check is going to be price. However, you guys can add other stuff. I would encourage that. Actually, this API gives you a whole bunch of stuff. So you might want to add some other check command, you know, check. Uh, I don't know, market value or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the other fields, but um, let's do price and description. So check price of coins and we'll have our action, which for now. Hello from price. Okay, and then we have to parse. So program dot parse and pass in our process dot argv. So just from this, if I run, let's see, dash H, we can see our check. And if I were to run check dash H, we can see price. And if I run the actual command check price, we should just get a hello. Okay, now 
we're going to create a separate commands file just like we did for key. So you can see the, you know, the structure of this. Um, this is going to be check.js. And in check.js, we're really only going to have one method. So let's first create our object. Um, and then we're going to have price. Okay, whoops, I just changed the settings on my mouse. All right, so we can bring in into Coindex ch in check. We can close Coindex up. Let's bring in check uh, if I can spell right. I can't require and we want to go. Let's see commands slash check and then down here. Instead of just putting check dot price right in here, I'm actually going to put it here and I'll show you why in a second. Get rid of that. All right, so this should still work. It should still give us our hello message or not. Um. Oh, I didn't export this. I don't know why it keeps doing that because I keep doing modules. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else had that problem when learning node. I, I guess I still have the problem. I used to do modules dot export instead of module dot exports. All right, so let's see. This should work now. Okay, so we get our hello message. Now, before we start dealing with the API, I want to show you how we deal with options. And what I mean by options is adding, you know, dash dash coin equals something. So we do that here. So under description, let's do dot option. And in here, it's going to take in a few arguments. The first is the actual option, which is coin. Now, there's different types of options, like when you do dash dash version, you just leave it. You don't say version equals something. So And that, that this is fine for that, like just dash dash coin. But we want to say it equals something. So we want to put in some angle brackets and then the parameter, which is the type, the coin type. Okay. and then the second is going to be the description. So here we'll say this is going to add specific. Uh, specific coin types. in CSV format. And then the third is going to be the default that we want to use. So I'm going to use BTC. So Bitcoin, ET, uh, Ethereum, ETH and then XRP. These are just the symbols for the different coins and those will be the defaults. And you'll see why I why I set them up like this when I show you the API and how the response works. Now I want one more option here for the currency. So this is going to be dash dash cur and this is going to have. Let's say currency. And say change the currency and then the default last one is the default, which is going to be USD. All right. Now to access these options in our price here in our method, this action right here can take in. Uh, argument of CMD and then we want to pass that in here as well. Okay, and then in our check JS and our price, we can pass in CMD and we should be able to access those options that the user puts in. So let's say CMD dot. What is it? Uh, coin. And then we have CMD and the other option is cur for currency. Now, if I go ahead and run check price, we get our defaults. So this is the coin default and USD is the currency default. And if I set it, let's say dash dash coin equals just BTC and then dash dash currency equals euro, then that's what I get. So we can now we now have access to those in our price. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this. Now it's time to deal with the API. So I'm going to go to the 
uh, site here. Let's see, we want where are the docs right here? Show me the docs. And if we go down to standard currencies, so this gives you a request example and it even gives you the response. But what I'm going to do is grab this. Just copy this and I'm going to open up Postman, which is an HTTP client. You can do this in your browser as well, but this will format it nicely. So I'm going to just going to make a get request to let's put this URL in. Now this gives us a demo key. You can see key equals demo and then it also has uh, convert. Uh, to euros, which I'm going to change to USD and it also has the interval one day, 30 days. I'm just going to get rid of that. And then get rid of this curl and the uh, quotes around it. So this is the URL that I want to make the request to and let's see what it gives us back. So notice the IDs. We have the Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple. So it gives us an array of objects and each objects has the info for each of the coins. Okay, so here's the Ethereum and we get the currency symbol, name, rank, price, circulating supply, market cap. So all this stuff you can use in this application. However, we're pretty much just using like the symbol and the rank and the price. Okay, so this is the URL we want to use. Now I'm going to create a separate library to deal with the API. So under lib, let's create a file here called crypto API .js. So this is going to be a, a class, but I want to bring in Axios because we're going to be making a request. And let's also bring in colors. Oops, const colors. All right, now this is going to be a class crypto API and we're going to have a constructor and the constructor is going to take in an API key because we need this in order to make a request. We need to put it in the URL. So I'm going to set a couple things here. One is going to be the API key. which will set to the API key that's passed in. And then we also want the base URL. So the base URL, if I go back to Postman, is going to be nomics.com version one currencies ticker all the way up to that before that question mark. So that's the base URL. And again, you could use a different API. Just you just need to change a couple things up. So we have that and that's it for the constructor. Now we're just going to have one other method here called get price data. And what's going to get passed in here is the coin. And the currency actually. Maybe it's like coin option and cur option. Basically, whatever, you know, the option, the command options are. Um, and then in here, let's do a try catch. And for now, we'll just do console error and. Uh, let's say error. Just do that for now. So in the try here, we want to make our request now with Axios. It returns a promise, so I'm going to be using a sync await. So we'll label this asynchronous and then we can just set a response variable and await Axios to get. And then in here, let's put in some back ticks and we want the uh, base URL. And then after that, let's actually go back to Postman and just copy after the base URL, the question mark and then the rest of this stuff. And we'll paste that right in there. Now the key, we don't want the demo key, so I'm going to replace that with this dot API key, which will get passed in when we instantiate this crypto API. The IDs, these are going to be replaced with the option. So this is going to be the coin option. And then the currency instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, hard coded USD. We want uh, cur option. 
All right, so that is the response, and then res.data will be the the uh, the I'm sorry, that's the request. Res.data will include the array of what I just showed you in Postman. Now, there's a few ways to handle this. What I'm going to do isn't really the best practice. I'm going to I'm going to format the output within this function. Uh, but if this were like a production app, I would probably just have this return the response and then do that somewhere else. But just to keep this simple, we're going to go ahead and set the output, uh, set the output here. So let's uh, what am I doing? Let's let output equal an empty string. And then what I'm going to do is take the res dot data, which is the array of objects and loop through with for each. And for each just, you know, loops through an array, we'll say for each coin. Then let's take that output variable and let's append on to it, not equals. We want to do plus equal. We want to, you know, we don't want to overwrite each one. And then let's see after that we're going to return the output. Okay, but up here this is where we want to format our output. So first thing, let's just say coin colon and then we want the basically the symbol. So if we look at the API, this coin object has access to all of these. So we want the symbol right here. So let's say coin dot uh, coin dot symbol and I'm actually going to make this yellow. So we'll just say dot yellow using colors. And then in parentheses, I want the actual full name like BTC is Bitcoin. So coin dot name and then we'll put a pipe character and we'll say the price. Which we get from coin dot price. And after the price, we'll put a rank and we'll say coin dot rank. Let's make the rank blue and let's actually make the price. Oops. Let's make the price green. Okay, so that will give us the output and it will return it. Now back in our check JS, we want to basically bring this into our price. So up at the top here, we're going to bring in both libraries. We need the key manager because we need to get our API key. This should actually yeah, equals require. And this is going to be in lib slash key manager. And then we also want our crypto API library. Okay, and then down here in price, let's first of all make this asynchronous because we're, we're getting a promise back from that um, from the, the API method that we just created. So let's do a try catch and down here we'll just do a console error error dot message make that red. Then up here we need to initialize our key manager. So we're going to set that to new key manager and then let's get our key. So we get that with key manager dot get key. I don't know why that didn't show up. Key manager. Huh. Oh well. So now let's initialize our API library. So new crypto API, which takes in our key. And then let's get our price data. Or let's say price output data. And this is this returns a promise. So API dot and then get I don't know why the IntelliSense isn't working. What do we call it? Get price data. Maybe we should call that get price output. I don't know. It's fine. Okay. Now this get price data. Remember, it takes in the coin option and the currency option. So we need to make sure we pass that in. And if you remember, we can get that with CMD. 
coin cmd dot uh, occur. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and output. So console log price. Oh, why is my why is this not working? Yeah, so console log price output data. All right, let's save that. So let's make sure we still have my key in there, which we do. And then we'll do. Let's just do this check price with no options. Crypto is not a constructor. I knew something was wrong here. Oh, I never exported this. Okay. It didn't know what the hell crypto API was. Let's try that. So we'll clear that up and we'll run check price. Okay, so it's working, but I forgot one thing I forgot was the new line character. So these are all in the same line. So back in the crypto API, let's just put a new line. So we want a backslash n save and then let's try it again. There we go. So now they're all in separate lines. Now, one thing I'd like to do is format the price. I don't like how that looks. So this is something that any anytime I need to format money or anything, I usually look something up on Stack Overflow. So I found a formatter option that we can use that will work with any currency. So let's go to let's see inside our try block right at the top here. Let's say formatter for currency. Um, so what we can do is set let's say formatter equals new intl and we're going to use the number format method here. And in here I'm going to use uh, en us. But we can add an option here and say we want the style of this formatted number to be currency. And the currency we want to be the currency option. Okay, which will be whatever it's USD by default, but they can put something else and then that will be added as the currency. And then we just need to go down to where we're outputting the price right here and just say formatter dot format and wrap the price. Don't wrap the dot green, just the price and then have the dot green. All right, so let's try that. So we'll run check price and now it's formatted nicely. And if we add a cur equals uh, EUR. There we go. So now it's formatted for euros. Now we're pretty much done. I just want to check something here. I want to check the I want to handle the errors. So if I remove the key. Let's do coin dex uh, key remove and then let's try to check a price. Okay, so that's that's fine. No API found. Now what if we set coin dex set key and we just put whoops, what I do? I'm sorry, it's key set. And then we just put something that's not valid and then we try check price. All right, so I don't want that to happen. So this should be a 401, I believe. This is basically what what's happening here is this console error. We're logging the entire error here, but it should be a 401. Yeah, response status is 401. So what we'll do is create a custom handler here. So let's change this to handle API error and pass in error. And then we'll create a function. All right, so I just want to uh, check here. Let's say if error dot and you can see it's in the response object. If the response status 
is equal to 401, then let's throw a new error up. And we'll say your API key is invalid. Go to HTTPS nomics.com. All right, and then I mean, I guess we'll just let's do a 404 just in case it doesn't reach it. Um, so we'll say if the error dot response dot status is equal to 404, then let's copy that. And we'll just say the API is not responding. And then else we'll just throw, I don't know, throw new error. And we'll just say something is not working. What is going on here? Oh, I forgot my quote. Okay, so let's try that again. If I go ahead and I try to check price, your API, yeah, your API is invalid. Go to nomics.com. Cool. I mean, there might be some other situations like uh, rate limiting, I think is 429. And I mean, you, if this were production, you might want to check for some other errors as well. But I think that I think that this is pretty good. Um, if you want to change some things up, that's fine. I would suggest building upon it. You know, if you're interested in stuff like this, build upon it, maybe get some other data in addition to, you know, price. You can check for, I don't know, if we look at the data here, market cap, circulating supply, you could change the output. You have this stuff here, 30 day high. So there's a lot of data to work with, or you could just switch it up, use a whole different API or build just a whole different application in itself. But that's it. Hopefully you guys like this and you learned something from it and I'll see you next time.